What is going on, people? Today, we're going to have a burner. We're going to be talking about how you can increase your sales. And there's a few foundational things you need to do before we even get to that without spending more money. Now, part of doing that is you need to have something already established. I want to be very clear and I want to be very definitive to this because you have many people out there who are still in hustle mode and they don't have a sales program. They don't have a marketing program. They don't have advertising and they're just hustling. So for those of you who are in a hustle mode, this isn't going to work. But for those of you who have an organization that's got a little shape, a little size, you're making some money, this will help. Just to be clear who this is for and who this isn't for. Because uh, one of the things I haven't done a very good job of is defining what information is for hustlers and what information is for business people. And there's a lot of stuff that's been conflated. Now with that, we need to do some housekeeping. Uh, if you've noticed, there's been a lot of changes here. So for those of you who are in hustle camp and you're like searching for the, um, uh, Hustlers uh, marketing dojo and it's hidden because I had people who were buying products there that weren't ready and then they were like hey we need this and then I'm trying to do this and it was just completely unmanageable so I hit it and what's going to happen is all of that content and it's not that much is coming to hustlers kung fu life skills dot com everything is going to hustlers kung fu life skills dot com now with me doing so much uh, some of you who've gotten in, and I will say the overwhelming majority of you have been very patient, and we thank you for that. And there are some of you who, like, call every day. Uh, stop that. Just stop that. That's ridiculous. It's not going to make anything happen any faster because one of the things I had to do was to get my process, which is probably going to take another two weeks for me to nail down my education content training process. This stuff does not happen like this and that's one of the reasons that if you're struggling it's because you have a it's got to happen like that mindset steve jobs did not build apple just like that bill gates didn't build apple um microsoft just like that jeff bezos didn't build amazon just like that these all of these guys struggled to build what they built so with the going with the grand vision of building out these courses, it's going to take some time and seeing how for those of you who are really working hard, for those of you who are really taking the doctrine, understanding, inhaling it, you know, it's going to be OK, because the time it takes me to get all this stuff together is going to be much quicker because uh, I made some strategic moves where I'm devoting more and more time because uh, this is day two where I've putting up three videos. How about that? I mean, seriously, I'm taking it day by day because there may be some backsliding. There might be some craziness, but that's what's going down. Also, hustle camp people, anything that I do and offer that requires me to get on the phone with you or to talk with you, you don't get that. That would be crazy for me to say, hey, I'm offering this new program where I get to talk to you on the phone and, oh yeah, you know, you paid 99, but that, that's insane. And most reasonable, conscionable, decent folks know that. And I don't even have to say that to them, but there's some of you broke dick, Danny, who are trying to squeeze all you can out of your $99 and it's not going to happen with that. How do you increase sales without spending more money? This is something that you're going to want to be part of. For business people, and let's define business people. You have something that's already up and running. It is not in your mind. It can't just be in your mind. It has to be out here actually collectively making money. So tomorrow, what I'm going to do is uh, Patty and Valencia are going to be calling people on the text notification list. And we're going to ask you a few questions because this is how you increase sales without spending more money. You talk to the people who are buying, have bought and get information out of them. It sounds super simple. It sounds common sense. It's one of those first layer knowledge things that 99% of companies don't do. 
it's so obvious, it's so clear, and it's like, ah, we're not going to do that. Because it's first layer knowledge, people tend to disregard it and to ignore it. Now, I've done this before. I actually have gotten on the phone and talked to a lot of you, and I asked a few questions, and it made a big difference in my business. So that's going down tomorrow. Plus, for those of you who answer, there's going to be a special offer. It's going to be a new program. I'm not going to get into the new program because the folks who are on the text notification list will get that offer and we'll go down that way. All right. So this is what I'm doing. See, I am teaching you what I'm actually doing. I know it's amazing. It's like, wow. So this is the first stage. Patty and Valencia will make the phone calls. And I'm going to prepare because I've already got part of it done, but I need to do some more. I'm going to prepare a list of questions to ask you, getting your experiences. Well, I should say, and Patty and Valencia will be making the calls. And then we're going to take that information. And as a thank you for answering the phone and doing this, the survey, we're going to offer you a very nice program. Now, what did I do there? One, I set notice of that this thing is coming to customer service. If you are selling something, whether it is a e-commerce site, whether it's Amazon, whether it's eBay, and you do not have a customer service department, you are leaving money on the table and you're not leaving chump change. You're not leaving a couple of dollars. You're leaving either thousands or in some cases, millions of dollars on the table. This happened recently. Someone had a problem with Hustle Camp. And, it, it, you know, because the thing is, a lot of people don't want to talk to anybody, so they, don't, they won't get this deep. And it was just like, I can't log in. Do you know when you have online courses, one of the biggest problems is logins? This is what at, prompts people to ask for refunds. They can't log in. So the person couldn't log in. So Patty went ahead and did her thing. And she said, send me your login. And then Patty logged in and on her phone said, I'm in here. And she said, oh, you're using Chrome. I was using Explorer. Now, even with that, the courses are supposed to work on all browsers. So there is even a further problem. I don't know if her Explorer. And once again, this is the kind of stuff that happens when you create courses that no one ever tells you about because they haven't sold enough to encounter these problems message so patty did an amazing job of getting her served and solving her problem and going through the deep steps of what is this because see this is the thing if one person has a problem oh more people have a problem and as a course creator as an educator as a trainer i can't market the course create the course and do customer service I could do it, but it'd be very, very inefficient. It'd be like crazy inefficient. It would be, it would bury me. I have a friend who I consider to be brilliant, who put out a course and he is scared to put out another course because of all the customer service issues that he had. He's just one person. He put out his course. He was doing 30, 40 grand a month because he's well known in the industry. And he shut that down because of customer service issues. He just couldn't handle it. So if you think that you're going to build an online business and it's just going to be you, you are going to be one incredibly talented and smart and you're a genius. For those us regular humans, our mere, mere mortals, we need help. We need systems and we need teams. So if you want to make more sales, without spending any more money. And once again, this is for folks who already have something going on, because if you're just hustling from scratch, you're always hustling, you don't have any systems, you don't have any employees. And this is not really going to help you because you would then have to develop a customer service team, which you should be doing anyway. When I was selling all this stuff on Craigslist, I was customer service, but we had lists, and I also had a partner, so it wasn't just me, and we had a few employees, so once again, but I was customer service. Now, why was I freed up to do customer service? Because there were people to unload the trucks. Um, my partner was listing on eBay and Amazon, So, and this is kind of one of the things that a lot of people 
when they look at Gary V, like he's hustling, he's answering questions, he's taking selfies. If he was just one person, he couldn't do that. If he was two people, he couldn't do that. If he was three people, if he was four people. Oh, wait, he's got like a 700 person company. He's got all these folks to do all these other things while he can do what he's good at. But, you know, you know, and I think he even says it, but people don't listen. They don't take it. They don't eat it. They don't ingest it. They just kind of look at the, the wow factor, the, the golly gee, he's making it big. He's done all this stuff. And he has said this so many times. He worked for chump change for years. Chump change for years, years, not a day, not a week, not a month, not months, but years to get the knowledge that it now enables him to make multiple millions per month. And there's a lesson in that because I guarantee you, VaynerMedia has a customer service team. I guarantee you they have one. I know for, and I don't know a lot about VaynerMedia, but I, I know that he has a customer service team because you can't grow the way that he has grown without one. You just can't do it. So that's my advice. That's my stuff to you, how to make more money with sales. And we'll also talk about developing a sales program. Like how many of you have a sales program? Well, better question. How many of you have a business with more than three employees? That's the thing, because if you are the baker and you're the server and you're the cashier and you do the marketing late at night when you're half tired, your business is not going to grow. It's just not. It's not going to happen. Nope. 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 So let me get off of the chat room because I started this early. Yes. Let me tell you about that. Since I'm redoing stuff, I am making some moves because like I'm not announcing the schedule because I, I have a feeling for what kind of schedule I want to create. I, I have this place that I want to go, but I don't, we're not there yet. So I'm going to be throwing content at you like uh, guerrilla warfare, throwing grenades, just knowledge grenades, just like boom, boom, boom. And, you know, in a week or so, we'll see where the dust settles <laughs> and then we will go ahead and announce the schedule. All right, so let me go into the chat room, see how many folks are here. Oh, let's see. What's up, Kindle Vision? What's up, Conscious Ether? Matthew Campbell, I'm loving these real business topics. What's up, young Brandon? This dude bakes health before wealth. You like the real business topics? Matthew Harris, if I'm not hustling, I'm not making money. What's up, Health Before Wealth? What's up, Al Gordon? Rona Stocker, Johnny Walton. Goran Nimit. Uh, what's going on? Are you like in France somewhere? What's up, Michael Watney? What's up, Serna? What's up, Zola? So looking. <laughs> what what is the, what is the what is the eyes? That's funny. It actually shows up as eyes when I hover over it. Soul Alchemy. Christine Pereira, good afternoon from Brazil. What's up? Uh, Ganja, I knew I would have to hire for customer service if I have an online business. We're, I'm going to tell you how that goes. What's up, Green Machine, D. Coleman Show? Chris Monroe, teamwork makes the dream work online and offline. This is really cool. Where are y'all getting these icons? I want some. <laughs> Delegate. Uh, actually, delegation comes with a price and i'll talk about that in a minute dante what's going on they tell for you to be making these kind of is that miss something big in the news asking for a friend what do you mean i don't know what are you talking about dante j atl is the atl it's very interesting sure does what's up michael francis d coleman show Lewis Ward, what courses do I need to take to make a cleaning service company successful? Let me ask you this question. How much money do you have? Do you currently have a job? And do you have um, help? Is it just going to be you? So go ahead and put that in the course. All right, so let's talk about delegation. 
Delegations is a nice word, but until you train up your people, until you give them the tools to be successful, it's kind of hard to delegate. Hiring people and managing people is a huge drain on personal resources. It's massive. So unless you've got, you know, it's like garbage in, garbage out. So if I just go ahead and give some funky orders that are not good, that are not clear, then I'm going to pretty much get some lackluster results. So delegation is a skill set unto itself. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's talk about customer service. Um, I was customer service for Craigslist, and I'm going to tell you why I was so successful on Craigslist. I had my Craigslist emails on my trio. You remember a trio? And I actually got a Verizon Air Card to slide into my laptop. And I always had my laptop with me. I think I don't even know what it was, but let's put it this way. I made more money in about an hour or two to easily justify the cost of the card because it's Craigslist, right? So when someone emails you, you need to be Johnny on the spot. You do not need to hit them back like the next day. Like so many people, when I'm making offers and stuff on Craigslist, they hit me back the next day. That is not going to um, keep your cash flow high. It's just not. All right. There we go. Because the uh, sun is setting and it's getting dark. There we go. So you must have rapid response. That's one of the reasons I have Patty. Because if it was on me to get back to y'all, it'd be days. Because I have so much. It, it literally, it would be days. And then that creates a bad customer service experience. That creates a bad taste in the mouth. And then people like abandon. So Verizon Air Card took my laptop to me with auctions. Between auctions, I was on my laptop. I was listing. I was answering Craigslist questions. Because this was mid, this is 2000s, right? Early 2000s. People have more places to spend their money now than they did back then. So you've got to look at it as I'm in competition with every web page, Facebook. This happens, and you can check out the, the uh, how this happens. Say someone is on your website and they're buying something. Then they go to the shopping cart. They actually put something in the shopping cart with every intention of buying. Then this thing sends a notification that um, let's say Nicki Minaj is naked on Facebook. Oh, let me go check this. And they completely forgot about your shopping cart. So this is one of the reasons that a lot of online uh, shopping carts have an email reminder. Because then they're like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. And then they go ahead and buy. Is that, is that real? Is that harsh? Is that staggering out here? And this is one of the things that you need to do and learn to build your online business. Because, like, remember when all these guys were, like, doing Shopify? How many of them, with the Shopify videos, how many of them talked about customer service? You can get someone who can literally type in their address wrong, and they paid, and they want their product, and they're like, oh, I didn't get my product, and it's on me. I'm cool with, you know, you taking some time. That's a customer service issue. Or... My credit card doesn't work. That's a customer service issue. Uh, one of the things, and I don't know what's going on with PayPal, but sometimes you can try to buy something with PayPal and your credit card, and you're putting in your numbers, you're putting all your stuff, and it just doesn't work. Then you have to, now, here's another thing. A lot of people don't have a lot of multiple credit cards. They may have a bank card, and that's it. So the, and that doesn't work. You don't get no money. There's so many little things that can kill your business or make you lose money that you're not aware that you're losing. So customer service is huge. Let's see. Um, what's up, Michael? What's up, D. Coleman? Uh, what's up, Matthew Harris? Appreciate you. What's up, Prince? Dante J talking about all the movies. Oh, you ain't seen none yet. 
Watch yesterday's video. It's in there. You're giving good info. I mean, a lot of people don't understand the importance of customer service. Give you how many of you have Comcast or Charter and the customer service is absolutely deplorable. You want to know why? They have no competition. There's like literally just a handful of companies that you can get your internet from. And that's why their customer service is below normal, below par. Uh, Chris Monroe, people are the hardest thing to master in, entre uh, in entrepreneurship, in my opinion. It can be a challenge. It can. Uh, Ganja, I agree with you on that. I manage a team of three engineers. It takes time for them to get up, up to speed. Andre Kelly, um, I don't really have anything good nor bad to say to uh, about Prime America. I know that they sold out. Someone bought them for billions of dollars. But what's up, Afri? <laughs> Prince and uh, Soul Academy of Flirting. That is so precious. What's up, Melissa? Maddox, pro service and flooring. What do you mean? If you want, like, a good answer, you got to give me some information. And this is one of the things where I'm trying to train y'all guys up because – Based upon the questions you asked me, I can almost figure where you are as an entrepreneur because you're asking very basic questions. And I'm not trying to beat you up or talk down to you, but you got to ask better questions to get better answers and better answers gives you better results. So another thing about customer service and having a customer service person, and I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm watching the number of people pop in and pop out. How to increase your sales without spending more money, elevate a hustle, right? A lot of people are not watching this video, and I'm not mad. I'm just pointing some out because many people don't have a business. They have a hustle, but they don't have a business. And they're not interested, and this is not wrong nor right. You know, it's, it's a personal choice whether you want to just hustle or have a business. I think having a business is better, but... They don't want to do that because when you get addicted to hustling, it is hard to let go. This is what happened to me when, well, let's see. Let me say this correctly. There was the two of us, and we had to hire our first employee because it was too much for both of us. And we actually dragged our feet for about two to three months not hiring someone we clearly needed to hire someone we clearly needed to make moves we clearly needed this person but we did not want to let the money go because it was just us and it was easy math it's like you get half okay so we made five thousand twenty five hundred for you twenty five hundred for me this person this other person i don't know about all that and one of the biggest things that's so hard for most entrepreneurs is hiring. Many entrepreneurs will set up a business and remember what I talked about containers and your business and they will build a business that can only grow to so much. I don't care, you know, all the stuff about the Internet and leveraging. You can only do so much leveraging as one person, because even if you have a flawless product and most of us don't, you are still got to have the customer service issue where someone's got to answer an email because you can't get back to someone two or three days later. You can't do that now. They're like, bye. I'm going to keep my money in my pocket. I'm not, you're you going to ignore me? You're going to ignore me? I'm King Kong. Yeah, no, seriously. That, that's how people feel. How many of you freak out if it takes three to five seconds for your internet page or whatever to load? And it's just like, you, come on, you know, three to five seconds. Now, add some money to that. <laughs> add some money to that and see what happens. Prince, flirting helps your financial status during tax season. Melissa V, happy customers come back, bring friends. He pimp, where are you going? You going to the garage? So another thing about building a customer service team 
and creating experience. How many of you have Apple computers, an iPhone, an iPad or something? Many of us do, not everyone. There's like Team Android, I know. Apple has created an experience and an expectation from you opening up the box. That's customer service. Like when I buy an Apple product, open up the box, pull it out. Uh, when I got my MacBook Pro, I pulled it out and I flipped up the thing and it, it came on. It was already 80% charged. Every Apple product that I have bought, the experience has been the same. Efficient, pleasant, and easy. Now that's an expectation that if I buy an Apple product that I, I need to be getting that. But this is another problem. Since Apple has created this expectation, everyone else needs to do it too. Because if you ain't doing it and I'm not getting my Apple experience, my pleasant, efficient, happy experience, well, I don't like these other guys. And if you notice that pretty much all cell phone boxes open up the same way now. Galaxy, pleasant experience, same kind of tray. Apple forced everyone else to do what they were doing. Customer service. So you've got those hurdles to deal with. Uh, let's see. What's up, Randall? Let's see. Melissa, we got to hustle for two more years. Then the house is paid off. Congratulations. Then my can guy go part time and I can put 100 cent in the real business. Now, that's a smart play. Getting rid of debt, because if you could pay a house off in two years, get that sucker paid for. That's worth doing. Soul Academy, not flirting, just happened to freak with the same checks. Prince was flirting with you. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. What's up, Randall Riley? Francis Joseph, what advice would you give to a 23-year-old young black guy who lives in France? I have 10000 on the side. I'm starting my business. I sell clothes and I flip iPhones. Well, it's funny, uh, you know, because you said young black guy. On Disruptive Mail tomorrow, I'm like dealing with the court system as a black man. That's going to be up. So that's where I thought you were going. Uh, be honest with you, France Joseph. I don't know a lot about how to start businesses in France. I don't think that it's the same as it is here. So I would need, like, can you just start an LLC in France? Uh, I will say this. Keep your $10,000 and find a business that makes as much money as possible while you're still trying to figure out a business model. Because I cannot honestly say that starting a business from a legal structure in France is like it is here. I don't know. <laughs> Team man, Roy. Green Machine, how does customer service work with truckers that's leased on to a carrier? Uh, you you deliver that load on time. That's your customer service. That's all they care about. Jasmine Nicole, I don't have a business, but I'm still watching. Cool. I said it right the other day. Don't don't break don't break me down. Now another thing with customer service. Um, when I got on the phone and I talked to you guys, I was able to reduce my sales cycle. There's a lot of things that you can find. And this is the thing. You don't need a bunch of people. You can talk to 10. I talked to over 200 people. And I, that's not a lot of people. It really isn't. And I got so many insights. It was amazing. What's up, Marquise Barton? Michael Francis, you need a lawyer for that France person? Yeah, because like I said, I don't know what it's like to start a business in France. And I'm not going to assume or try to guess. Because I do know there are fundamental differences starting a business in the UK, France, and these other countries. I know in some countries, you got to bribe people. And I'm not just joking. I, that's for real. Like, you got to bribe people. That's how their system works. So, who here has worked in customer service? Just out of curiosity. Maurice Anderson, what are your thoughts on cold calls? When I worked at Renacrate, that was my job. Cold calling for eight months 
they made money off the work that I did in those eight months for three years. Because Michael Crump, he used to like, oh, man, yeah, they got this deal. They got this deal. Yeah, you know, from the stuff you did. Cold calling works. Most people don't know how to work it. Chris Ross, I haven't had a regular job since 2011. I believe I may be unemployable now. Well, that happens. Seriously, who do we have who's worked in customer service? And typically, most of you hated it, didn't like it, it sucked. Or am I close? Am I in the right place? And one of this, let's see, Erica Wilson. I have Starscream. I work in customer service. Maurice Anderson. Uh, I made him a lot of money. But once again, the contract was I get on the phone, I call, I book appointments. That was my job. And they paid me well for it. So Rona Stocker, customer service and sales. Okay. That is cool. How many of you like your customer service job? How many of you hate your customer service job? This dude bakes. If, I mean, customer service is customer service, whether it's a grocery store or anything. This dude bakes. Entrepreneurship is the key to success. <laughs> Rona Stalker, sometimes it did suck. What what sucked about it? Patty, you're funny. Uh, Michael, I closed those accounts. What do you mean? You closed those accounts in France? Starscream 1540 is the greatest and worst work ever. Why is that? Soul Alchemy, I have, I have and I do it with my business. How important do you think customer service is to the success of your business? Titan Moore. I'm in the UK. It takes 20 minutes to register a limited company. Okay, that's 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 the UK. Still, you know, if someone from France is watching, chime in. Erica Wilson, like is a strong word. Johnny Walton, I got my number. And I asked for Fat Cat Secret Steel, the best way for me to go. Um, if you're going to be self-employed, yeah. Melissa, I did grocery stores against my hot dog stand. Melissa, flea market. Customer service doesn't have to be this fancy thing with someone in the office on the phone. There's a lot of things you can do. Like I just used that Apple thing. Part of customer service is when you buy a product, it's pretty much easy, which reduced their overall customer service cost. Uh, working with customers who wanted too much for $2. What were you selling, Rona? This dude bakes. Love the fact that I bake in a place now where I don't have to deal with customers like the grocery store. <laughs> Uh, Starscream, it was great helping people out, but sucked because you had to deal with the a-holes. B. Bando from England. Uh, Millis V, it's everything really unless you got something that people are falling all over for, pretty much. Uh, we're looking for someone from France, B. Bando. Green Machine. Hey, are you going to bring on co-hosts to give your their? Let's see, are you going to bring on co-hosts to give their experiences like the guy I can't forget his name was talking about trade in Africa? Well, let's talk about that. One of the problems I have is finding competent people. If I wanted to bring just anybody on here, I can have I can have them lined up out the door. But finding people who've actually I know him. I know what he went through. I know his story. I know he's going to do like over a million dollars this year. Finding people like that, that ain't that easy. And I know a lot of you want to hear this and be inspired, but you're going to have to let that go because um, I got, you know, I'm going to try. Um, but I don't want to get in a situation where I find someone, then there's like a week or two before I find someone else. I got to figure that out. And also, once again, since I'm changing the direction of this channel, that may not happen. Because I don't know. 
that that that's that's going to remain a mystery because finding people that I deem worthy to bring in front of y'all is a challenge. It is a hard, hard challenge because how can I say this? I feel I have a fiduciary duty to tell you the truth. And I know like this one person, she lost her YouTube channel. And, you know, from all outward appearances, it looked like she was balling out of control. But her boyfriend was an investment banker, and that's why she had the nice apartment. And when they broke up, she just completely fell off. She was able to present that image of success off of his paycheck. And I don't want to bring you guys that kind of stuff. <laughs> Prince, you sold a Kirby vacuum? Wow, that's a hard sell. Worked in a lot of retail jobs, that counts. A green machine. Now, this is one of the things. Now, you want that, right? And no one else wants that. <laughs> From a business standpoint, that is not really a good move. You know, you can find I can send you his information. He may talk to you. No, he won't talk to you. <laughs> don't, don't even start me doing that. Ronald Stocker, in one of my previous lives, I sold new cars, American Variety. Oh, you sold domestic. Go ahead, girl. They came in with Ford Focus money, and they wanted a Mustang Explorer and F-250s. If you didn't know, an F-250 can cost you 50 Gs. So when you see those Mexicans with those brand new F-250s, no, they pay cash because they don't have credit. France Jones, thank you. I meant any money advice with my first 10000 Is it a good amount at 23 years old or is it just all right? Well, I wouldn't even look at it like that. I feel that everybody needs to have $10,000 saved up. Everybody. That's just like the beginning. So at 23, you're doing fine. If you don't have any debt, do you have any personal debt? Melissa V, I'm waiting for a call from an eBay contact that wants 15 paintings, so that's a great sale, but I have to be willing to give personal time to a customer to make it. I'm going to tell you about, I'm going to tell you a lot of eBay stories in a minute. That's funny. All right. So I'm going to tell you something that probably will get you in trouble, but y'all don't seem to care about that. I used to use eBay to sell locally. And I would cut eBay out. And this is what I would do. You can't do this now, so you probably can't get in trouble. I would put up pictures and embed my website in the picture. This was before eBay got all crazy. And people would just call me direct. I made so much money selling direct using eBay to find these people. So that's... um. You know, like uh, guns. You can't sell guns on eBay. But one of my tricks that I would do was I would take pictures and there would be a picture of a gun or part of a gun in the picture. And the smart people was like, I don't really want that. I was kind of thinking it, but are you selling that gun? And now I hit them back up. Well, you know, I can't really sell a gun to you over the Internet. I would have to do that in person. But, yes, it is for sale. I'll drive down there for it if it's what I think it is. Some picture of it. Oh, yeah. Cool. Set price. They come down and buy it. So there, there's a lot of sneaky ways. This is what yeah, tax tax slayer is probably going to be real crazy. Green machine. I worked at a grocery store. Also sold. Cutco knives for six months. How was selling knives? I still put my website on some of my eBay listings. I'm slick too. <laughs> they find you. Okay. Oh, there was all kinds of things that you would do. I sold guns on eBay. Well, I used eBay to find someone to buy a gun. I used Craigslist to find someone to buy a gun. Take a picture. Don't mention it in the listings. And the smart people will figure it out real quick. T 
Titan Moore PMSL. I don't know all this new internet terminology. What is that? I pimped eBay because this is what happened. I was eBay loyal until eBay was disloyal to me. And, you know, during that period, I've talked about it several times when I had to turn Craigslist into our income source, I became very disloyal to eBay. And I used a lot of their traffic to benefit us. Now, you know, one of the things is, and this, this is really, really hard for many people to wrap their heads around. If you can really get good customer service and you can get a good sales program, you can make millions. Now, with that said, I'm still developing this. I'm still putting this together because one of the big issues I had, and this is it's confession time, this little confession. I could do a lot of stuff and it was just like hard to pick. And I was like, okay, you got to pick some. You got to let some stuff go. You got to pick some and you got to focus or it's all going to fall apart. So that's the reason like uh, I didn't go on Facebook today. Not once. I was tempted to look and I, I, I'm addicted. Hey, my name is Glendon Cameron. I'm a Facebook addict. I like messing with people. I like starting stuff and running away. I like to throw the rock, hide my hand. I love that stuff. So I, I really had to let it go. Oh, that's hilarious. Piss myself laughing. That's a, definitely a British thing. It sounds British. Uh, France Joseph, debt free. I put 100 every month from retirement as you mentioned in your videos. Okay. Keep saving, build up, keep hustling. Because let's talk about you know money very, very quickly. Uh, $10,000 for starting a business without industry knowledge is woefully insufficient. And you really need to be like 20 to 50. And you also need to have industry knowledge because if you have the money and you don't have industry knowledge, you're going to lose the money. Lewis Ward, I work offshore and I'm working straight time to come up with money. My mother is planning on retiring and she cleans houses and offices and she and wants to give me the clientele. Okay, how much money does that make? Green Machine was surprisingly good until someone returned their $700 order and they wanted my 25% commission back. <laughs> wow. Uh, Ronald Stark is selling cars is cutthroat. Yes, it is. It is totally a man's world. They sold my cars when I wasn't there. Mm-hmm. They would make me walk, walk the lot, rain, sleep, or snow. High keys for me. It sucked, but I learned. <laughs> Good Lord, they were really vicious to you. I just paid 1500 in eBay seller fees last week. I don't have much love for them. Yeah, um, I've recently sold some stuff on eBay, and I was really surprised at the fees. They were quite substantial compared to the last time. Uh... Erica Williams is addictive. Go to these credit repair Facebook groups and folks will tell you to pay your, pay your bills on time. Mm -mm -mm. The sob stories in these Facebook groups. Like I said, I, I'm on a Facebook timeout. Uh, Marcus, uh, I'm an IT admin and a realtor, and IT from a customer service standpoint is way worse because most people are not technically proficient with IT. I remember I called this guy for one of my websites, and we were just talking, and he actually said this. He said, thank God you know how, you actually know how to do this stuff. You would not believe what I deal with every day. And I was like, because it was, uh, I had to go to the DNS thing and I knew where it was. And he, he was just like, oh my God, you're such a breath of fresh air. Because most folks don't know technology and run from technology. So I can see, because he was literally pulling out his hair. He really, really was going through it. But this is one of the ways that you can make a lot of money because 
when I, you know, I'm trying to get back to my formal hustle because I'm like, you know, I like someone I got the Betty hustle. I got the Betty White hustle right now. Except I got a cane. Betty White don't have a cane. And I'm just sitting there like, okay, I got to amp back up. And uh, some interesting interpretations on my dream. Uh, Johnny, closest I ever came to customer service was detailing cars. Hmm. Maurice Anderson, people don't know how to right click and clean the recycle bin. He ain't lying. I mean, there's a lot of people who are very computer illiterate, which is fine, but a lot of them want to stay computer illiterate. So you have that. Today, anything new is too much to learn. I, I will say that part of my problem is I got to learn a lot of new stuff. And I, I know that I have to learn a lot of new stuff, and I have not been looking forward to it. Wait a minute, Eric Williams, you're kidding me. Meet any inner city kids who do not know how to use the internet. If you tell them to apply online, they just quit. It's really bad. Really? That's crazy. Melissa V, when I worked in the deli, I would have a line of people that would pass on a free person just to wait for me. Guess who got the raises FERC and picked their own hours? I have done similar things because there are some people that are just easier to deal with. Uh, there are some people who are grumpy and there are some people who are just di diabolical, really. Marquise Barton had a doctor put her laptop in the freezer because she thought it was overheating. You're kidding me. You're kidding me. Facts. It's the way some businesses control the applicants. True. What do you mean, Green Machine? Because uh, one of the things, you know, you're going to see like an evolution. You're going to see a lot of change with the content and the things that I talk about. Well, this is one of the things. And, you know, we're going to talk about Erica's situation. We have one of the most connected and educated generations ever. And in the same breath, we have people who don't know how to use the internet in 2018. Now they know how to get on Facebook, they know how to surf, they don't know how to build a web page, they don't know how to um, build a blog, they don't know how to build a YouTube channel, they do not know. I mean, Monica, a lot of folks, I, I can under, I can see that. B. Bando, I hate selling. It made me want to go back into full-time employment. Nope, I don't have any computer literacy courses. I'm staying away from that. But here's the thing. And one of the reasons that people hate selling is no one ever told them how to sell. And this is what happens. And you can do this right now. You can go on Craigslist, pick in any city, anywhere, and go back, a, well, yeah, a week or two on anything and ask these people if they still have this stuff. And 70, 80% of them are going to still have that stuff because they put up the listing one time, it didn't work out, and they said Craigslist is too many problems. You know how many times I typically listed an ad? Just guess. Just guess. A uh, laptop in the freezer, that, that's crazy. I can't go hard on my site or my channel the way I want to. I'm still working. I need to keep my grind on the low. You think they would get rid of you if they knew that you had your own website? That's, that's crazy. All right, I want to see how many people can guess how many times I actually relisted stuff. I'm waiting 20 times green machine. That's one Melissa V three times T Tiga five to seven times. 
I learned you had to put it up multiple times. You can build. You can build a website with Notepad, ePimp. Every this is something. I think it's called. I don't even know what it's called. But a lot of people find it hard to believe that there are people who don't have the skills to do a lot of stuff. Uh, Soul Alchemy Six. Wow, Rana. This dude bakes seven times a day. Diana Thompson two. Ganja 10 times a day, Monica 20, Titan Moore 8, The Hectrix over 100, Johnny Walden 50. I listed it until it sold. I didn't have this arbitrary number. Uh, if I did a good job of titling, a great job with pictures, a great job with the description, I could pretty much move it within one to two listings. And there was some other stuff that it took me a minute to figure out. But... I listed it until it sold, and I didn't even keep track. I just listed it. It's like every day I had, this, all right, still got this list, list. I didn't even think about it. Uh, Chris Monroe, I relisted at least 30 times for some items and ended up getting my full asking price. Now, most folks don't know this how Craigslist work. I'm going to tell you another funny story. Wow. All right. So this lady, this is about 2004. She calls me because I've got this Asian table set. It's um, a get out of the unit. There was a lot of modern furniture. And it was very unique. It was very special. I looked it up. It was selling like for 15 grand. I knew I wasn't getting 15 grand, but I put seven just in case. The unit only cost me 800 bucks. So, you know, whatever. And she calls me and she's breathless. Oh my God, you answered the phone. Yeah, that's what we do here. How may I help you? Don't sell that table. I want it. I am in New York. Okay, I am moving to Atlanta. I already have my residence and I need that table. And she was just so very matter of fact. And one of the things I've learned on is how to read people. She was very much used to telling people what to do. It was just automatic for her. She was just, I'll pay you. And I'll say, well, you know, we deliver. You don't want to deliver? Oh, my God. Bless you. Yes. Yes. So what I'll do is I'll send you an invoice through PayPal, and you can just pay for it. And then send me the address and everything. Bless you. Oh, my God. You are the easiest person to work with. So I send her an invoice. Pay seven G's now seventy five hundred dollars just like that. Go ahead, deliver it. She's still not here, and I go to the house. The real estate agent meets me at the house. We deliver it. I take a picture of it in her dining room and send it to her. She bought all of that modern furniture when she found out what I had. Customer service, being open to stuff. I was one of the few people, and believe it or not, that took PayPal on Craigslist. I was like, yeah, we take PayPal. You know how many times I got screwed on Craigslist with PayPal? Take a guess. Take a wild guess. Uh, this dude bakes. Yes, some companies will get rid of you if you know that you're doing something on the side. Now, I'm going to be sensitive to that because I haven't had a job in 18 years. And... I have learned to be more empathetic because I honestly don't know. Like uh, France Joseph was asking my friends, if I don't know something, I'm going to tell you. I'm not going to even assume this. So I don't know what it's like to have a job. It's kind of strange saying that, but I really don't know. Uh, Monica Stewart, you missed that part. I did it all the time on eBay. <laughs> You still try to sell those turkey growlers. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Cal Sneed had a technician that couldn't take pics and upload them to Dropbox, but he can find all the phone and dating sites. Wow. Business will fire you if you're an entrepreneur looking for another job. So alchemy. Good Lord. 
Uh, Maury Sanderson, what are your thoughts about giving dumb people your time? Um, clarify that. I, I don't think I know where you're going with that. Erica Wixom, five times a day. I've taken PayPal over FB. Chris Morrell just sold a bed for 300 from Craigslist. Drew PayPal at midnight last night. We deliver Friday. I've never gotten screwed on PayPal on a Craigslist sale. Now, full disclosure, people don't try to screw you over sofas, beds, washer and dryers, refrigerators. These are things that people don't buy because they want them. They buy them because they need them. And if they work, there are no problems. None. Never got screwed. But I wasn't, I would not take PayPal for a cell phone. I wouldn't take it for an iPad. I wouldn't, no, that, those are cash only deals. So that's another little lesson for you. You have 3,500 wrapped up in them. Woo. Between business people know most people give up on entrepreneurship. Sold alchemy some. <laughs> All right, Monica. Uh, Diana, Moonline, they think it takes away from company productivity from the worker. I didn't know that. Elizabeth, you need to see some of the scams they have now. Wow. Ron the Stalker, yes, that's so true. I actually love my job, but I have other interests. I like providing business support for small businesses, not just government, with, which is my bread and butter. I know when I told Mason that I was quitting and I turned in my two weeks notice, he was like, you can go now. <laughs> so for sales, yeah, you if you're in sales, they're like, bye, you're gone. That is wild. So that's it. I mean, you got to have a customer service thing if you're going to build anything. You're going to build a blog because you know how I like to use similar web and show y'all that a lot of these things are not really hidden on anything. There's a reason. How are you going to make money when you don't have traffic? So there's a lot of um, things that are taught and said online that are just not factual and what I want to do is to be a ray of light and be shining lights on those roaches and stuff because you can start a business and you can make money. It's just going to take some time. And that's the thing that everyone seems to be in short supply of. Nope, I'd never have gotten scammed or anything. All right, let me, let me just tell you. How many of you have bought a washer and dryer? What was your mindset when you're buying your washer and dryer? If you were a price conscious shopper, you wanted the best washer you can get for whatever your budget was, right? And you, they, they delivered it and it worked. Did you even think about turning it back, you know, uh, trying to do a chargeback? Once it gets in your house, once it performs the way it's supposed to, that's it. You don't have these issues that you have with these small electronics. I mean, I would only take cash for a cell phone. Unless it was eBay. I would only take cash for an iPad or a cash for a computer because people treat certain things like money in the bank. And what I mean is it's like they'll buy something from you through PayPal, like a phone or a course or something. And then like their car breaks down. It's like, oh, I can get that money back from Glendon. I know when it happens because they always make up some crazy story. Uh, square payments. I don't, I don't do square anymore, but it is good. I actually introduced a lot of people to square. No chargebacks on Bitcoin. What's up, cartel 007? What's up, ganja? Remember our years of schooling is to teach us to be employees. So businesses don't tend to support entrepreneurship. Hmm. No, I was like, I've not had a job in 18 years. This, I've been doing this. I mean, I was upscale garage sale. And now this, this is what I've been doing. 
Lewis Ward, I'm paying off my car and student loans, then stack money so I don't have to work for 8 to 12 months, then I'll create the business. I need a course to start me in the right direction. Okay, I think I can help you with that. I have not looked at Rona Stocker's YouTube page. No, I haven't. I've not looked at most of your YouTube pages. So what's up, health before wealth? All right, so here's something else that's happening. Let's see. Let me go ahead and uh, hip y'all to this. We're at this point where, okay, don't tell me. You got to be kidding me. Uh, is my keyboard. Oh. All right, so. Keyboard is not working. <laughs> Marquis Bond, when I became a real, I just told my boss so they wouldn't be asking questions when I ran ads or showed listing on Facebook. <laughs> Chris Monroe, do you think there are people? Yes, I already know that. Uh, this is kind of wild. My keyboard is not working. <laughs> oh, this is funny. This is hilarious. Hold on. Let me turn it off and turn it back on. This is what happens when you do stuff live. This is crazy. It just like would not work. Let's see. That is wild. Okay. Okay. Now let's see. You know, when I used to, oh, there it is. When I used to do stuff and things would go wrong, I used to freak out. Now I'm just like, oh well, it happens. Hustler's Kung Fu life skills. All right, so let me just hip y'all to a new pricing strategy. All right, so I know some of you are gonna be really thrilled because some of these prices are gonna go down. One of the reasons that I kept prices high was I didn't want people to buy stuff. I, know, I mean, that, that's a great deterrent. If you are working on something and you don't want anyone to buy it, just put a really crazy price on it. So what's going to happen is a lot of these courses are, you know, not the bundles. Let me be clear. Not the bundles. Not, let me just, so you can look into my brown eyes, not the bundles. But the individual courses will be super economical. They will. So I will be working on that and I'll be listing courses in the videos because now since I'm doing three videos a day, I can do a special a day. I can do a course. So what I'm going to do is make the YouTube course. Eh, actually, let me let me poke around here and see which course is going to be best for this video. Give me a second. If I had some Jeopardy music, I would play it. Because I don't think I have anything on customer service. So, what I'm going to do is, let's see. Aha, cool. Oh, uh, I'm going to do the writing for cash course. And I'm gonna make it ninety. I'm gonna make it eighty-nine dollars, because that will help you a lot. And then, so that's gonna be the special today. Well, it's gonna be the everyday price. Uh, a lot of these courses are gonna be like ninety-nine bucks, and then the bundles are gonna be what you you get the better deals. So today's, yes, writing for cash. And there's going to be a lot more courses. So B 
be prepared. And let's see. And I'll put this in the comment. And we will go. You know what? Hold on. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. I know what I should be doing. Hold that thought. Uh, I'm going to still leave that at that price, but uh, I should have did this before. Like uh, today, I did a lot. I did a whole bunch. Aha! Asking for the money. What is this? Pricing. Aha! So we're going to put asking for the money for $99, which is a sales course. That makes more sense. And it'll always be $99. I'm going to leave it like that because I've got some other plans coming. So give me a little time to make these like 99 bucks. Aha. Uh -huh. Ask for the money. Nine nine dollars. Put that link there. And put sales course. There we go. So that'll be at the top. And then you can enjoy that. It's under the video now. And let me get back to where I need to be. That's those Apple products. You're funny. I'm out leaving work. Tasha James, what's up? What's up, Okadoki? Uh, Tax Slayer, the bundle is not going to be, but yeah, most of the courses I'm probably do 99 bucks. Haven't seen the movie, can't come in on it. I need to share my trucking experiences as a two-year driver, but really haven't taken the time to invest into equipment and software due to home obligations. Hmm. Tasha James, I need to ask for the money course. Yes, the Ask for the Money course is now 99 bucks, and there will be more things like that. You ask anybody who's got some money for the money, man. That's what you do. That's what you do, player. All right, so that's today's episode of the live stream. Tomorrow, I'll probably be back uh, 4.45 to 5 o'clock, and then I will be listing regular videos throughout the day. So this concludes another successful day. And this is how you have to take it day by day, because there'll probably be a day where I only do one and y'all be like, OK, he's crazy. But I, I know myself. All right. So for those of you who want it, it's the first link and under the video and it'll be the first comment. Once this renders, ask for the money for ninety nine bucks. That's the price it'll always be. And as I build it out, you should enjoy it. And tomorrow. If you're on the text notification squad, expect a phone call because we got something special for you guys. And with that, uh, you guys have a good afternoon and I am about to go have some dinner. So, adios.